Hi, I want to welcome you to worship with us today at St. Andrew United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Jonathan, and we are glad that you're joining us on this first Sunday in the season of Lent. Before we get started, I want to invite you to download the worship bulletin. That way you can follow along with the rest of our service. And you'll also find an attachment that has the sermon notes. And at the very bottom, you'll find the questions for reflection and discussion that we'll use this coming week in our small groups. So if you want to dig a little bit deeper and, and maybe look a little more detail at the sermon, I invite you to download that and look through it this week. Obviously, there are our links for our children's message as well as our music. And I hope that you'll look at each of those segments of worship as they provide a, a way for us to be enriched spiritually and offer our worship to God. At this time, I want to invite you to join me in our call to worship. And I will lead, and I invite you to follow in the bold print. There are some journeys for which we long. The way of discipleship and faith is difficult. Put your hearts at ease. You are not traveling alone. I'd like to invite you to bow your heads with me as we go to God in a word of prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. And God, we thank you that you invite us into your presence wherever we are. That is where we can find refuge and hope. That is where we are safe for you to look into our lives, to give us a clean heart a new mind, and a renewed spirit. We pray that as we begin this new season, that we would be prepared for the journey, that we would condition ourselves spiritually to take this long journey towards the cross. We pray that you would encourage us and strengthen us as disciples, that we would be committed to the disciplines that help us grow. Bring to remembrance uh, in our mind throughout the day the importance for prayer and for study and for times of fellowship and service. Lead us and guide us through this season, Lord, that at the end we might look more like Jesus. And now together as your people, we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into, our, into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved One. 
with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lord, we pray that you will bless the reading of your word, that it will come alive in our lives, that we will hear from you anew. And now I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In his book, The Problem of Pain, C.S. Lewis writes, we can ignore even pleasure but pain insists upon being attended to. God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pains. Pain is God's megaphone to rouse a deaf world. That's the question I want to ask you today. What are you going to do with the pain in your life? Or more importantly, what are you going to allow God to do with your pain? I think our minds probably immediately gravitate towards our own personal problems and struggles and conflicts. But today I want us to think a little bit bigger than that. In fact, there might be some of us who would say, I don't really have any pain or suffering I've never really experienced that in my life. I've had a, a great life with a, a nice occupation, a family that loves me, and, and I have exceptional health. But I want us to think about a, a different kind of pain that we're willing to experience. And to make my point, I'd like to tell you a story. In the early part of the 20th century, there was a young woman who felt called by God to become a nun. Her name was Agnes. As a young woman at the beginning of her career, her heart was on fire, and she was ready to change the world. But her first assignment was to work as a teacher in a Catholic school. And even though Agnes thought being a teacher was a noble profession, she knew that it was not, it wasn't her calling. And so she, she asked to be reassigned. One day as she was riding on the train, she passed one of the poorest cities in her country. And she distinctly heard the words, I thirst which are the words that Jesus spoke from the cross. And in that moment, she believed that Jesus was present with the people in that community, that he was there suffering alongside of them, and he was calling Agnes to come and join him there to serve some people who had been forgotten. And so Agnes wrote her bishop, and she asked to be reassigned as a missionary to Kolkata. She was denied. But she kept writing letters, and eventually her request was granted. While Agnes was in Kolkata, she worked with some of the poorest people in the world. Each day she worked with lepers, and she witnessed people dying daily of starvation. And even though she was in the place where 
She believed God was calling her to live. Something strange had happened. She no longer heard God's voice like she did on the train that day a few years earlier. In fact, it felt like God had completely abandoned her, that God was almost absent. And in her memoir, she talked about how for the rest of her life she struggled with her faith, which raises the question, why would God take her into the wilderness, so to speak, only to leave her feeling abandoned and alone? She called her spiritual state the dark night of the soul, borrowing the language from St. John of the Cross. Originally, this expression described Jesus while he was on the cross, crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It reminds us that when we're willing to join Jesus in his work, that we must be willing to join him in his suffering we must be willing to join him in his abandonment. Now, if you haven't put the pieces together yet, Agnes' Agnes's name was eventually changed to Sister Teresa and ultimately Mother Teresa. It's hard for us to imagine how such an influential figure struggled so deeply with her relationship with God. But it gives us a good window to look and to see what it it looks like to truly accept God's will in our lives and follow Jesus. So here we are again back in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus was baptized by John, and he witnessed the Spirit descend upon him. He heard the divine voice say, This is my Son, the Beloved One. With Him I am well pleased. What a mountaintop experience that must have been. And perhaps some of us can relate. Maybe we can think of a time in our lives when our hearts were on fire and we were ready to do anything and everything that God was calling us to do. And then Luke tells us, Mark tells us, that Jesus was cast into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tested for 40 days. Mark's account is pretty modest in comparison to Matthew and Luke when it comes to the details of of this account. For instance, Mark doesn't tell us that Jesus fasted during this 40-day period. And Mark doesn't narrate what it looked like for Jesus to be tempted by the evil one. Nevertheless, Mark gives us everything that we really need to know. As I've mentioned recently throughout uh, this sermon series, the Greek word eremos, it can be translated either wilderness or a desolate place. And it was commonly believed by people in the ancient world that demonic forces dwelt in the wilderness. And Mark indicates that Jesus was in the wilderness, was in this desolate place among wild beasts. And, and so not only was Jesus in this desolate place with demonic forces and wild beasts, Mark tells us that he faces the prince of darkness himself, Satan. What a major contrast from the mountaintop experience that we read about just one verse earlier. There are really so many questions that come to my mind. Did Jesus feel abandoned? Was this the first time that maybe Jesus recited the words of David from Psalm 22? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Did Jesus begin to question God's plan? 
Mark doesn't answer any of those questions for us, but he does indicate that it was this experience that prepared Jesus for his public ministry. It was the abandonment, the loneliness, and the spiritual oppression that prepared him to join the most forsaken people on the planet. And Jesus did not resist suffering spiritually. Instead, he learned to embrace it. It was in his pain that God prepared him for the rest of the journey. You know, if we're not careful, then we can turn following Jesus into this kind of self-help program with the objective for Jesus to fix our problems and to take away all of our pain. But if we listen to the gospel, it tells us that if we follow Jesus, he will inevitably take us into the wilderness where we will join him in the dark night of the soul. Now for some of us, the greatest problem in our lives is that we don't have enough problems in our lives. We avoid suffering at all costs. Or maybe in an attempt to resist suffering, we don't allow the testing that we experience to work to its fullest potential to transform us into the likeness of Jesus. It can actually be argued that one of the main themes of the New Testament is to learn how to let suffering become beneficial to us in our walk as disciples. In his letter to the Romans, Paul writes, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Now I realize that's a lot to take in and absorb all at once. So in case you didn't catch all of that, let me summarize Paul's point for you today. He's saying that we not only boast in hope, the hope that we receive in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, but we also boast in suffering because suffering is ultimately what produces our hope. It's this cycle. And Paul is telling us that we, we can't actually have hope without suffering. It's kind of a strange idea, isn't it? All of this. And as strange as it is, it's important for us to remember that Lent is a penitential season. A season that takes us into the wilderness so that we can look beneath the surface of our comfort and explore how God wants to shape us and mold us and to people who will take up a cross and follow Christ. Lent is a journey that teaches us to deny ourselves and embrace the suffering of Jesus so that ultimately we might join him in the power of his resurrection. So at the risk of repeating myself, I'll say it again. When I talk about pain, I'm not necessarily inviting us to, to go into the deepest, darkest places of our lives and, and dig up our dirty laundry and all of the trials and tribulations that we've experienced. Even though God can use all of that, even though God can, can work all of that, I'm really talking about the pain that we're willing to experience by following Jesus into the wilderness. The pain that we're willing to experience by going into a place where we might be abandoned. I'm talking about the spiritual suffering that we might 
experience when we're willing to join others in their suffering. The dark night of the soul. What we find in the story of Mother Teresa and ultimately in the story of Jesus of Nazareth. So, over the next 40 days, are you willing to go into the desolate place? Are you willing to be abandoned and alone? Are you ready to begin this journey of Lent? Let us pray. God, we come to you now, asking your spirit to continue to stir in our hearts and our minds that we'll consider a little more carefully today what it looks like to be a disciple of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to be willing to follow him into the desolate place, into the wilderness. Help us to be willing to experience the dark night of the soul so that it was, as we participate in your death, we too might join him in the power and the glory of his resurrection. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.